Do-it-yourself zinc tests like the taste zinc test are very popular and online you will find dozens of guides that show you how to do them. Unfortunately, in many cases these tests are misleading and in some even completely useless. In this video I will talk about why this is the case, why other at-home zinc tests like the fingernail test aren't much better either, and how to determine your zinc status instead to figure out if you need to supplement or not. Before we get started, let's quickly talk about zinc and its functions in the body. Zinc is an essential dietary mineral, meaning we need to get it from food because the body cannot produce it itself. Unlike the macro minerals such as calcium or magnesium, we only need zinc in very small amounts. The RDI for women in the US is 8 mg and for men it's 11 mg. That does mean it's not important though. Its most important functions have to do with 1. Growth and development. This is especially important for children. 2. Hormone health. Here a lot of people think about testosterone, but zinc is also needed for the manufacturing of progesterone, for example. And 3. Skin health and immunity, which is also why a lot of the zinc in your body is found in or around your skin. Now, if you suffer from a zinc deficiency, all these benefits reverse. So you might suffer from dry skin, lower than optimal testosterone levels, and stunted growth in children. This is especially a problem in the developing world where a lot of children are zinc deficient. There are two big causes for zinc deficiency. One would be food processing, because just like in the case of magnesium, most zinc is lost during food processing. And two is stress. When your body is under stress and activates the sympathetic nervous system that is responsible for our fight or flight reflex, it throws out calming minerals such as zinc and also magnesium and calcium. I explain this in more detail in a different video, but if you suffer from chronic stress, chances are that you have a latent zinc deficiency. Besides these two major causes, there is also the role zinc antagonists play in our diet. One of them being copper, which I talk a lot about on this channel. Both copper and zinc regulate each other, but in high doses they can also antagonize each other, so they push each other out of tissue and block each other's function. That's why a good zinc to copper ratio is so critical, and we will talk about that later in this video. Okay, because your zinc status is so important for optimal health, it's no wonder people are looking for ways to test theirs. This is where at-home tests or DIY tests come into play. Let me first talk about the liquid zinc test or the taste test. Basically what you do is you buy a bottle of liquid zinc and this is usually zinc sulfate. Some people also recommend you don't eat anything for an hour prior to the test, but this is optional. And then you take a teaspoon of the zinc liquid in your mouth and leave it there for 30 seconds while paying attention to the sensations in your mouth. If you notice no metallic taste at all, then it's said that you are zinc deficient. If you notice a small or delayed metallic taste, then you are slightly deficient. And then the more metallic it tastes, the better your zinc status. So if immediately after you taste the zinc, it tastes super metallic and unpleasant, then your zinc status is supposed to be optimal. The idea is that if your body already has enough zinc, it will signal this to you through an unpleasant taste. And also zinc in general is important for the sense of taste, so this also plays a role. Next to the zinc taste test, there is also the fingernail test, which is even easier. Basically, you just look at your fingernails for any white spots, discolorations, or brittle nails, for example. It's said that when you have these, then you're definitely zinc deficient. Okay, with that said, what's my problem with these at-home zinc tests? I mean, they're super easy and non-invasive. So what do I have against them? My main issue with them is that they have a lot of false negatives. So people who show not to have a zinc deficiency, but who are actually zinc deficient. I've seen too many people pass these at home tests, even though later on they definitely were zinc deficient. I will explain how this is possible in a second, but what you have to understand is that a latent or a slight zinc deficiency is very common. Most people out there should probably supplement zinc, but if they do an at-home test and pass it, then they might think that they don't have to. So what I'm trying to say is that 
The taste test especially can be an indicator of a zinc deficiency, but if you don't pass it, that doesn't automatically mean that you're not zinc deficient. Unfortunately, the fingernail test is even less accurate because not only the white spots, but especially the brittle nails can be caused by a lot of things. It's usually nutrient deficiencies, but it doesn't necessarily have to be zinc. Back to the main question, why does passing the at-home zinc test not mean that you don't need to supplement? For this, you have to understand that there are two types of zinc deficiencies, an absolute zinc deficiency and a relative zinc deficiency. An absolute zinc deficiency basically talks about having enough zinc in your system so it can fulfill its basic roles that I talked about before. So hormone production, immunity, skin health, all these things. A relative zinc deficiency talks about its ability to keep other metals and minerals in check. For example, copper or also toxic metals like mercury. This second relative deficiency is what a lot of people miss. Theoretically, you can have enough zinc in your diet to fulfill all its important functions in your body. But if you also have a high copper load or a high toxic metal load, then they will antagonize the zinc, which means even though you are getting plenty of zinc on paper, it's still not enough to do its job properly because it needs to work against so many other competing metals and minerals in your body. In practice, these at-home zinc tests aren't very good at spotting the relative deficiency where you are getting enough zinc and pass the test but are still relatively deficient compared to other nutrients. In such a case, you would still need to increase your zinc intake, for example, through supplements, and you would miss this because your test would say everything is fine. This obviously then brings up the question of how to check your zinc status correctly. Nutrient testing is a very controversial field and there are a lot of opinions thrown around about what the best test is and what we can even test in the first place. The common standard test for your zinc status is a blood test. Most do it in the serum, but also some practitioners in the plasma. I personally am not a big fan of blood tests because nutrients aren't stored in the blood, they're stored in the tissue. But I also don't believe the notion that there currently are no good zinc tests available, which I've also seen thrown around. My favorite test is a properly done and properly interpreted hair analysis. And I explain in a video how and where to get this done if you are interested. It will not only show your zinc level, but also the levels of competing nutrients such as copper and toxic metals. So you definitely know what you're working with and how to bring those critical nutrient ratios back into balance. Okay, so to wrap up this video, let me quickly summarize everything in a few sentences. Basically, what you need to know is that there isn't only the absolute zinc deficiency that a fingernail or a zinc taste test might spot, but there's also the relative deficiency measured against other nutrients in your system. This is sometimes even more important because these nutrients can antagonize zinc and keep it from functioning properly. Unfortunately, at-home zinc tests often give false positives when it comes to relative deficiencies, which is why I usually don't recommend them. You can use them as a first indicator, but not as a basis for building a diet or a supplement program. 